What's going on there guys? It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Sunday evening. It's the end of the weekend, October 3rd, 2021 to date, uh, 1045 p.m. California time, latest quake out here on the uh, USGS map. Shows a 2.7 in Alaska, also uh, within the last hour a 3.1 out in Texas. Some further large-scale movement down here in the South Sandwich Islands region at the southern end of the South Sandwich Trench, kind of inland as well, but at the surface, a 6.2 earthquake at 10 kilometers below surface. This area right here has seen quite a bit of movement over the past month or so. Of course, that large earthquake striking uh, down within this region some time ago, but we're still seeing some aftershock sequences. Most of the earthquake activity uh, has died down, but um, like I said, we're 6.2, it's a pretty good sized earthquake but it's well inland and away from the main region where we had seen that earthquake activity in the past. So kind of watching that, you know, is everything, is everything kind of done here in this region that we're, we're still seeing pressure, but in a, in a different area? I, I believe so. It's a pretty shallow earthquake for a 6.2. Uh, and it's been relatively quiet over here for the past couple days. South America region uh, getting in on uh, some activity as well, including a pretty, uh, Where'd that deep earthquake go? Inland, right? It's going to be inland. Inland on the map. So a 4.6 in the Chile area. Or Argentina, excuse me. Argentina region, 201 kilometers into the subduction zone here. We have been watching pretty uh, some pretty deep earthquake activity in that region recently. Let's go ahead and bring the all magnitudes here so we can see what we got in the Puerto Rico area. And there's not a whole lot to report in Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico trench up here looks pretty quiet over the last 24, just a few uh, small quakes in the Puerto Rico area. Uh, some movement up here along the Appalachian Mountains, just a 2.0 in, in Tennessee. There's some activity around Oklahoma, Quinton, Oklahoma, and also some movement in Kansas, a 3.8. Kind of a little bit on the larger side up there. Uh, let's see, up in Idaho, they did have, let's see if we can see that, yeah, yesterday, past the 24-hour period, we had a 4.0 that kind of popped up in the sawtooth fault, um, fault system up here. That uh, 4.0 striking at about 12 kilometers below surface, pretty deep for this region. Uh, looking at the uh, movement today still continuing in that same area just a uh, a few small quakes 3.0 being the largest in that uh, little activity yellowstone usgs not showing anything on the map here but we'll take a look at that here in a second uh, there's definitely some movement taking place there uh, in yellowstone also some activity along the garlock fault structure once again of course this area had a 3.6 uh, just a uh, well, 3.7. Okay, looks like they upgraded it. Uh, 3.7 that struck there yesterday, but past the 24-hour period. And uh, today, just a small little microquake within that same region along the Garlock Fault structure. Some activity in the Salton Sea area. No swarming. Just a couple small microquakes up and down the region of the Southern California area. And also some uh, movement in the Ridgecrest region and up north around Mono Lake and also the Antelope Valley area still seeing some aftershock uh, movement here in this region. Let's see what we got here just south of San Jose at 3.3 near uh, Morgan Hill. This area has seen a little bit of movement as well in the on the uh, Calaveras and the Hayward fault system up here these two separate faults been seeing some movement over the past few days and now a 3.3 a little bit further south kind of can't say they really can, can uh, meet. They kind of run together down here, it looks like, uh, at least here on the map, but kind of within the southern section there of that uh, region. Up here north into the Redding area, 1.5 near Bella Vista, 24 kilometers deep. I'm guessing that's going to be a trimmer quake down dip downstream in the Cascadia subduction zone. Let's check that out here um, real quick on the trimmer map. See what we got kicking up here. Oh, wow. That's a lot of trimmer. <clears throat> That's a lot of trimmer for one day. 814 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia 
And there's that movement in the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, Northern California. Of course, the uh, movement down dip downstream, creating a little bit of a of a measurable magnitude quakes at the uh, I shouldn't say the surface because that Redding earthquake was you know pretty somewhat pretty deep, but uh, we're definitely seeing a little bit of activity um, kicking up here. Might uh, like I say this is we need to watch this area I think pretty closely it's uh it's not doom and gloom it's not fear mongering you know, I've seen a couple comments there on, on, on one of the videos but uh, you know it's what do you do you know when there's a massive amount of trimmer here and there has been over over a week now in this area you just you just forget about it and just say you know go about twiddling your thumb and you know everything's just beautiful right now everything's beautiful but it's not gonna be if this thing goes um, so I'd like to pay attention to this, and I think everyone should when it, we start seeing quite a bit of trimmer in this region. Trimmer building up stress along the lock section of the Cascadia subduction zone. It's a fact. And uh, today, 814 epicenters. That's about the most I've seen in one day in quite some time. Uh, all the past few days have been, oh, three, five hundred, six hundred, 500, 600. Uh, but now we're up to about 814 um, and it's at right around Seattle area and the Northern California region. So just we, be on guard, folks. Just be on guard in this area. Um, let's see what else we got. The Cascade's pretty quiet, though, right now. If you look at the volcanoes, no microquake activity. Uh, nothing really to report in this region. Aside from that quake outside of Redding, Bella Vista region, pretty deep, 24 kilometers right around the uh, tr um, the trimmer location down dip downstream there uh, let's see here what else we got uh, we'll check out Yellowstone while we're at it let's make sure we got the latest map here and uh, you can see up here around Maple Creek once again got some movement that's no doubt earthquake activity and that's uh, quite a bit these are all microquakes very small quakes but they are quakes nonetheless and they've been consistent and ongoing here uh, at least for the last 24 hours uh, on this map of the of the uh, Yellowstone seismograph. Not a whole lot moving in uh, inland. It's not really showing up too much on any of these other stations. That's because they're very small earthquakes occurring around the Maple Creek region. Uh, this earthquake here on this map uh, looks like, what, what do we got, 330? 0330, I believe that's going to be the... Let's see, is it the Kansas quake? 3.8, or maybe, yeah, here it is. That that's, looks like 0318, so we're off a little bit on the time. But uh, that what you're seeing on, on this map right here is that three-pointer in Idaho. Showed up, uh, actually showed up on quite a few stations there. So UTC time 0318, Idaho, Stanley, Idaho. All right, looking around the map here, folks. Uh, Philippines area, getting in on some uh, fours and some deep movement at that. South of the Philippines, off the coast of Tokyo, a 4.6 as well along the Pacific Plate. And the region around the uh, Vanuatu area, another deep earthquake, 142 kilometers deep for that 4.9. Kermadec Trench, some kind of a shallow quake at least according to these guys 10 kilometers for a point four point four uh in that region uh what do we got over here around iran a 5.6 shaking things up out in the uh, mountainous areas it looks like and also some earthquake activity in turkey so uh definitely seen some movement uh, but north america man north american play i think as long as we see that subduction zone up here uh, continuing with that trimmer uh, we're still looking at uh, a lot of activity moving um, into the Intermountain West regions and Idaho with that uh, 4.0. Just a whole lot of movement here into the Intermountain West regions. Can't really look at everything locally, right? Because uh, on this broad of a scale, with the dynamics and the pressure and whatnot being applied here along the West Coast, Northwest, uh, no doubt it affects the inland areas. And that's kind of why we're seeing quite a bit of movement into Idaho and the uh, Yellowstone swarm that's continuing today. Of course, USGS not reporting anything up here, but 
There's no doubt, looking at that map, it's up there, folks. There's earthquakes taking place there. Uh, let's see what else we got here, folks. I'm going to call it a, I think I'm going to call it a night. I uh, just wanted to get the stream back up and running. Everything is as should be, as it should be, I should say. Uh, if it goes down, I will get it up as soon as I can. Still not for sure what's going on with it. It's not the computer itself, but uh, I think someone being funny out there with a remote trigger or some type of access either through the Earthquake 3D app or one of the other apps that I use on the channel here. So that's all right. We'll get it. We'll get it. They can do whatever they want for a little bit, but uh, eventually, eventually, all things get uncovered. All right, guys. Have a good night. Stay safe out there. We will chat you guys another time. Peace out.